Jade bots are one of the amazing features we get with the new expansion from Guild Wars 2, End of Dragons. They are extremely useful and can be used for many reasons. In this video, we will learn all about jade bots, we will look at all the masteries and how to get the best benefit out of them. You unlock jade bots when you finish chapter 5 in End of Dragons, which is called the Scenic Route. Once you unlock jade bots, you can already work on all the masteries for them, and I will explain all of those masteries as we go later. Open your heroes panel and go to jade bot tab. You will find three slots. The first slot is for something called jade bot core. This is what makes your jade bot functions. And without that core, you will not be able to do that much with any jade bot. And then you get two modular chefs. The top one is called sensory array and the bottom one is called service chef. As we said, the core is what makes your jade bot functions. It also adds extra vitality for your character. The higher level your core is, the more vitality it gives. And you can go up to a tier 10 core. You can craft as a core directly and I will show you later how to do that, but you can also buy it from the trading post. If you want to get an idea of how truly amazing the jade bots are, I would recommend coming to the Garden Heights waypoint, which is in New Kining City. This is where you will find a lot of objects you can interact with using your bot and it will give you a very good idea of how to use it. As we go, if you found this guide helpful, Please consider subscribing and leaving a like to see more similar content in the future. Before we talk about the modules and what we can use them for, let me show you first what kind of objects we can interact with and what each of them do. As you can see right now, I have a core equipped. If I try to interact with any object, you can see it tells you you need at least one charge to interact with and you will find that this is the case with almost everything you can interact with using your jade bot. You get those charges by interacting with the jade batteries that you will find spread across all the maps in End of Dragons and you will find them everywhere. By default, when you interact with a jade battery, it will give you one charge and you can carry a total of two maximum. The second mastery in the jade bots, multi-charge, allows you to carry a total of four charges instead of two. And energy efficiency will allow you to get two charges every time you interact with batteries instead of one. So I will now interact with this battery and if you look on my bar, you can see I have two charges. Now I can pretty much interact with everything you can see around us here. And I will show you what every one will them do, because you will find those same objects in everywhere in End of Dragon maps. Every time you interact with any object, it will consume one charge. So I will not say it every time we interact with an object. Just understand that this is what will happen. When we interact with the JTEC Offensive Protocol, this will give us a buff called JTEC Offensive Overcharge. For some reason, looking at it on your bar does not actually list the full benefit. But when you link the skill, you can see exactly what it will do. It will give you swiftness when you interact with it. And then every time you will enter combat, you will get Might, Quickness, Fury, and Alacrity. On top of that, it will give you a huge boost to your power and condition damage. As far as I know, those boons either have no internal cooldown or very low because every time I went into combat I noticed that those spoons get applied. Every time you will interact with the offensive protocol it will give you this buff for 10 minutes and you can interact with it multiple times to stack the effect. It will stack up to about an hour and 30 minutes. I got 4 extra charges from batteries lying around now and I will interact with it to show you the stacking effect. When you don't have any more charges and you try to interact with it, it will not let you. JTEC Defensive Protocol works exactly the same way and it will also stack duration for up to about 1 hour and 30 minutes. It will give the buff JTEC Defensive Overcharge and if I link that skill and we hover on it, it will give a swiftness, regeneration, ages, protection and vigor. On top of that, it will give you a big boost to toughness and vitality. As you can see, both of those buffs are incredible. And so anytime you are in open world in End of Dragon maps, make sure you interact with those protocols to get the buffs when you enter combat and to get the boost to your power and condition damage and toughness and vitality. Zip lines are some sort of a taxi teleport system. It will move you from one point to another faster than any mount or glider you have. When you get close to any zip line, you will see a red ping on the mini map showing you where its destination will be. And if I take the zip line, you can see my character moving and you can see the jade bot pushing it. The mastery energy efficiency in jade bots 
will allow your bot to gather charges as you use the zip lines. If you paid attention, you would notice that the charges here will keep increasing as we use the zip line. However, we have used this already, so if I take it up and down now, it will not give me any extra charges. We are also kept at 4, so I will just use one of the charges right now to show you. And if we take the zip line again, we are not getting any extra charges. So there is a cooldown between how much you can gather charges when you are using the zip line. I do not know how long the cooldown is, but I am Imagine it have a very similar cooldown to whatever it takes a jade battery to recharge and you can interact with it again. That cooldown is per zip line, it's not shared. So if I try to use the zip line now, you will see I'm gathering charges as I go. Around the Garden Heights area, you'll find those jade bot terminals. When you interact with them, they will basically allow you to remote control your jade bot and use it as some sort of a drone. And you control your bot the same way you control your character. This skill will toggle on and off something called action camera. This will enable you to move your bot wherever your mouse is currently aiming. So it may make things a little bit easier for some people to control their bots. For the record, there is a very similar option that works in the game in general for everywhere, not just using jade bots, and you can find it in control options in the camera section. By default, it doesn't have a hotkey, but you can assign any hotkey and you can toggle it on and off. And this is what you will actually see me do most of the time whenever I'm recording any video. I use action camera almost exclusively. To deactivate your bot and just get back to your character, you can use this skill. You will also find those security turrets spread across multiple maps. And when you interact with them, it will take one charge. And now you have a turret that will actually help you in the fight. And the damage it will do is not that bad at all. In all of End of Dragon maps, you will find a lot of those chests spread around. Opening them will also require at least one charge. Most of the time, they will not give very decent loot, but every here and then, you will get something very expensive from them. If I take that core out, I can no longer interact with the batteries, which means I can no longer do any of the things we have just seen. To be able to use your Jade Bot on any character, you must have at least tier 1 core in that character. You can equip and unequip the Jade core anytime you want. However, in order to unequip or change your modules, you must interact with a Jade Bot workbench. In the first module, the top one, that says Sensory Array, we can equip all the recyclers, like the Jade Sliver, Karma, Bloodstone Dust and such, and you should know, that they are currently, at the moment I'm recording this video, disabled. They have been working before, and I actually have some footage from before, so I will be able to show you how they work, and I'm also pretty sure they will get fixed very soon, so probably only a few hours after this video that you will be able to use them again. We can also use any kind of scavenger, and there are multiple types of it. There is lizard for example, mighty trophies, magic trophies, and more. And again, I will show you later in some footage how they work. We can also equip mount energy booster. This will work on all your mounts and it will increase your energy regeneration based on the tier of the booster. There's also a specific one for the turtle mount which will increase its damage by 10% and I still have a guide coming in the near future where we will explain how to get the siege turtle and everything you can do with it. You will find all the current guides and the future ones I will make on all things related to end of dragons in a playlist that you will see on your screen now and in the comments and description. In the second module, the bottom one, that is called Service Chip, we can equip Treasure Hunter Protocol, and this will scan the area as you move and reveal chests on your mini-map. When you have a higher tier of the Treasure Hunter module, the bot will be more efficient and it will be able to reveal more chests and in a bigger area. Please keep in mind that this will not reveal hidden chests. For example, in Silver Wastes, you have to dig up a chest first using a shovel. This module will not reveal a chest that has not been dug up yet. A good example of where this module will be very useful is Bitter Frost Frontier, as all the chests in there are already revealed. So you will find that as you just navigate through the map, you will see the chests popping up on your map indicating the locations. Skiff Supercharger allows your skiff to move faster. The speed depends on the tier of your module. I tested this using a tier 2 and while only having the first mastery in the skiff and I found that the speed of the skiff was very very similar to the skimmer. So I believe you will be able to make it even faster if you have tier 3 and if you have the speed boost mastery in the skiff. 
Gliding booster will allow your bot to carry your character a little higher as you glide and the amount of vertical height you gain depends on the tier of the booster you have. When you glide, you will notice your skill number 6 allows you to have this booster. When you use it, you will see your bot carries you higher and you can keep gliding. One of the masteries you get with jade bots will allow the jade bot to help you when you go down. That skill have a relatively high cooldown and so using this module will reduce the charge on that skill. The higher the tier of the module, the more time it will reduce for you to use that skill again. Most of the modules I just showed you will have 3 tiers. You can buy all the tier 1 modules directly from the trading post or you can craft them yourself and I will show you later how to do that. But the tier 2 and tier 3 of the same modules are account bound, can only be bought from the vendor that you will find standing right beside any workbench. Go to the first tab that says module upgrades and you will find all of them here. To buy any of the higher tiers, you will need the lower tier plus some research pages. So for example, if you want to buy the Skiff Superchargers tier 2, you need to have as a tier 1 and 150 research notes. This is the same case for all the tier 2 modules. But for any tier 3 module, they will need the tier 2 module, some research notes, and they will also need another item. Each one of those items require you to finish a certain meta or a certain strike mission. And when you read the description, it will tell you exactly which boss do you need to kill. For the Skiff Supercharger Tier 3, you need an item that you will get by killing the boss that spawns in the Seitung province, which is the starter map in End of Dragons. For the Mount Energy Booster Tier 3, you get this item by killing the last boss in the new Kining meta. For the Rescue Protocol Tier 3 and the gliding booster t3 you get those items by doing the new strike missions that we get with end of dragons for treasure hunter t3 you get this item by killing the last boss in the echo vault wilds meta and for the turtle siege enhancer t3 you get this item by killing the last boss in dragons and map however you should know that those items are not a guaranteed drop i have personally done the meta successfully in echo vault wilds a couple of times and i did not get this item yet before i show you the recipe for each module, I will leave some footage on your screen now that will show you how each one of them works. All of the scavenger protocol type modules, like my trophies, lizard and such, as you kill mobs you will see a message on your screen that will say your bot found something. And when you open your inventory you will find those types of bags that will contain some loot in them. None of them is a guaranteed drop and I haven't seen any of them drop more often than the other. I have been saving some of the bags from each type just to show you an example of what we should expect. So let's open them together now and we will start with the lizard. As you can see, it gives us various tiers from the lizard, not just a certain tier. The most common is going to be tier 5. This is only from opening 10 bags, so the sample size is definitely a very small one. But this is just to give our people an idea of what to expect. Next, we will open the might trophies. And as you can see, we get different tiers of different crafting items, including tier 6 materials. Now let's open the magic trophies. There are more scavenger types, but this gives you the idea of what to expect. The recycler type modules convert any junk items you have into whatever type of module you selected. For example, if you have the recycler jade slivers equipped, it will convert all the junk items you get into slivers. And as you kill mobs and get junk items, you will get a message on your screen that says that your jade bot converted the junk item into whatever material you will get based on your module. Jade slivers, in my opinion, are the best option for recyclers. You will find various vendors around End of Dragon maps that will say Jade Sliver Recycler. When you talk to them they will sell you various items. This will include things like geodes, airship parts, and shipments that work exactly the same way as the living season 4 shipments and you can also find a season 4 currency box which you can open to choose any of the currencies in it. You can also buy those items which you can then later use for different vendors in the different end of dragon maps. One of the easier locations to reach those sliver merchants is right beside the waypoint in Arbor Stone and you get a scroll for it as you do the story. You can buy the recipes for pretty much everything we just mentioned from any vendor beside any of the jade bot workbench and you will see they have research mentioned in their name 
In the second tab, you will find recipes to craft all the cores, and you will also find a recipe for JadeBot Workbench. This is a decoration that you can put in your guild hall, and when you put it, you will have a JadeBot Workbench that you can use directly in your guild hall. But notice that there is no vendor beside it. And also please understand that based on the guild you are in, only certain ranks and only certain players are allowed to put decorations in the guild hall. In the third tab, where it says module recipes, you will find all the recipes for both the sensory array modules and the service ship modules. For anything that have more than one tier, you will only find the recipe for only tier 1 here. If you want to buy tier 2 or tier 3 modules, you must do that from the vendor and they are account bound. Everything you need to buy and craft for jade bots requires something called research notes. So now it's time to see how all those recipes work and where to get those research notes from. To craft any of the recipes we just saw, you must have a jeweler that is level 400 and you will only be able to see the recipes that you bought from the vendor. All of the modules will require some sort of a sigil and then oracle components and something called the piece of dragon jade. You can buy the piece of dragon jade directly from the trading post but you can also craft it and that will require 4 chunk of pure jade which is one of the items you gather in the last map dragon's end or you can also buy it from the trading post. You need research notes which you will see in a second, two gloves of ectoplasm, and five oracalcum ingots. And as I said, this is the case with pretty much all the modules. All of the cores will work in a very similar way. To craft any of them, you need the lower tier core and then three components. The three components don't change. You will always need research notes, and the amount of the research notes varies based on the tier of the core you are crafting. You will need some sort of ingots, and whatever material needed depends on the tier of the core, and then you will need piece of dragon jade which we saw earlier. The only exception is tier 1. You don't need a lower tier core because there is nothing below it. To get research notes, you use something called research kit and salvage any item that has been crafted by you or by any other player. You can buy the research kits for a very low price from any vendor beside any JadeBot workbench. I have done a lot of research and so I will give you some tips to give you a head start. The first thing you should know is that salvaging any of the gear using research kits will not give you any materials. It will only give you the research notes. To salvage an item, you need to double click on the research kit and then one click on the item you want to salvage. You cannot salvage items that has not been crafted. They must have been crafted by you or by another player. And in case you didn't know, you can buy a lot of crafted items through the trading post. The weight of the item you are salvaging does not matter. So here is a heavy glove. We got two research papers from it. Each one will give you 5 research notes, medium gloves also give us 2 research papers, and the light gloves also give us 2. And also sometimes as you salvage, you will be lucky and you will get some extra research. The type of armor you are salvaging also does not matter. We have a full set of medium gear, and you will notice we get the same amount of research from each one of them. The same goes for trinkets, the type does not matter. And the same applies for weapons. It doesn't matter if it's one hand or two handed weapon. The only thing that matter is the rarity and the level of the item. The higher level it is, the more research it will give you. And the higher the rarity, also the more research it will give you. So here is a master work helmet. We get two research papers. When I salvage a rare helmet, I also get two research papers. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is intended, but as of right now, masterwork and rare of the same level will give the same amount of research. But when I salvage exotic, I get three research notebooks. Each one of them will give me 25 research notes. Jade bot cores have 10 tiers as we said. The only difference between them will be in two things. The amount of vitality they give, with tier 10 cores giving a total of 235 vitality, while tier 1 is giving 100. The second benefit you will get with the higher tier cores is that some modules, especially tier 2 and higher, require at least tier 6 core. You 
will know that by looking at your notifications. But if I remove this tier 6 score and I put tier 1 instead, you will notice we have a new notification. It says your service chip, which is this one, is disabled because your power core is not tier 6 or higher. I will now show you all the recipes quickly one by one. Here are the Jade Core recipes. And here are the modules. All of the modules we just covered will work on all maps, not just the end of Dragon maps. Now that we understand everything about bots, I can talk to you about the masteries in details. Gliding Booster will enable you to craft tier 1 and tier 2 cores, and this is what will give you the ability to let your bot help you when gliding and use that skill we saw earlier. And remember that the amount that the bot will be able to pull you up depends on the tier of the core and the tier of the module you are using. Multi charge will allow you to carry a total of 4 charges instead of the 2 by default, and you can now craft tier 3 and tier 4 cores. Jade Tech Waypoint will enable you to craft tier 5 and tier 6 and it will give you the ability to put down a personal waypoint. You will find this waypoint down here in one of your mastery items. To use that skill you will find it below your weapon swap. The skill is called activate mastery skill and by default it have J as your hotkey but you can go here to control options, scroll all the way down to miscellaneous and then assign a different hotkey if you want. If I click on this arrow I will find all the different mastery items that I can equip here and one of them will be the jade bot personal waypoint. The skill have 10 minutes cooldown and as far as I know right now there is nothing you can do to reduce the cooldown for it but maybe in the future we will get some sort of module for it. You cannot use this skill in Vodis's world or in PvP or any group content instance like strike missions, fractals or raids for example. You can only pretty much use it in open world and this is a personal waypoint so you can set it up and I don't think anyone else can use it. I believe only you can use it. This is a one time skill and when you use it the first time even after 10 minutes you will not be able to use the same waypoint again. So if I was to put that waypoint right now you will notice my character is doing some sort of animation and when it's done it will spawn the waypoint and you can now see it on the map and it will have this icon and when you hover on it it will say Jade bot personal waypoint. If I click here it will give me a confirmation message asking me if I want to consume. This is because once you consume it you will not be able to use it waypoint again. So if I click yes, I now teleport it to my waypoint. It is now gone, I cannot use it again. And even after 10 minutes, the waypoint will not appear again. However, you will be able to drop it somewhere else. If I use it on this map right now, which is currently Echo Vault Wilds, and then go to a different map, I cannot use my waypoint either. You have to be on the same map to be able to use it. And even in the case, even if you did not consume the charge to take the waypoint, you will still not be able to use another waypoint until 10 minutes have passed. Energy efficiency will enable you to craft tier 7 and tier 8 cores, and it will enable your bot to carry 4 charges. The total limit for you is still 4, but now your bot can carry 4 charges. Because by default, if you deploy your bot out in the world, you can only carry 2. The last mastery risk protocol allows you to craft tier 9 and tier 10 cores but more important this will allow your bot to help you rally when you go down but just like the waypoint this will not work in pvp or world versus world or any instance only in open world and remember that there are modules called rescue protocol recharge and they have tier 2 and tier 3 versions they will reduce the cooldown of that skill this will replace your skill number 4 when you go down and it will raise you very quickly and while it is on cooldown if you go down again you will still be able to use your normal skill number 4 skill. The JTEC waypoint and rescue protocol masteries will only work if you have at least a jade bot core tier 1 equipped. If you have no core equipped at all they will both not work. You will not be able to make a personal waypoint and the bot will not help with you. I still have a lot more guides to come about End of Dragons and you will find all of the current and future ones in the playlist. You will find the link for that in the comments and description and on your screen now. I apologize for the delay on the Siege Turtle Mount guide but I have not been able to unlock it yet myself to be able to make a guide for it. 
I'm still currently working on it and that guide will be available as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you next guide.